Good day everyone. In this video, we will be discussing on installing and configuring Windows Debugger. We will then initiate an user dump on our installed SQL server and then view its content on the Windows Debugger. Let's get started. Let's first install the Windows Debugger. Uh, let's get into this particular link. Uh, put in this uh, uh, link to the article in the description. So we basically have to uh, download the ISO file as part of your Windows SDK. Once downloaded, you will see this um, um, ISO file. Just double click on that. And then you just need to open this uh, Win SDK setup. So right now I'm going to install it on the C drive program files. So if we look at it here right now, uh, the estimated disk space required for installing this is like 3.6 GB. But uh, since we are just worried about Windows debugger here, I'm going to select only that and everything else I will be uh, excluding. So let me click on next um, and then uh, just leave the defaults and then accept the license agreement. And uh, here, what I'm going to do is like, I'm just going to keep debugging tools for Windows and I'm going to uncheck everything else. So let me uncheck the things that are not required for me. So right now what I'm seeing is like it has come down, the estimated disk space has come down from 3.6 GB to 567 MB. So let me start the installation. Once the installation is completed, what we'll do is like uh, we will open the uh, Windows debugger, load the required public symbols, and also like initiate an, um, um, a user dump uh, on the SQL server, and then we will view it. So right now, the installation is completed fine. So let me try opening the Windows debugger. So what I'm seeing is like, um, um, if I just type WinDBG, I'm able to see like uh, I have a 64-bit uh, installed WinDBG. So I'm going to open that. And uh, once I have the uh, dump file, what I'll do is like I will uh, open that dump file in this debugger and then we will have a look. So before that, what we'll do is like let's uh, uh, create a uh, dump file. Uh, so in this one, it's a lab machine. Uh, I'm going to create a, a dump file here. So let me execute the command dbcc stack dump. This is completed. So what I'll do, I will uh, check the location where the dump file is, um, uh, is present, and then we will take it forward. So right now what I'm seeing is like there is a uh, dump created. It is basically mentioning like it's an user initiated stack dump and not a server exception. So let me go to the log folder. Let me get the details of the log folder. And then let me try opening that. So if I go there and then uh, look for the date modified, what I'm able to see is like there is uh, something called SQL dumps 002.mdmp. It's like created at 9.53 p.m. So this is the dump that we have created, okay? So what I'll do is like I'll copy the location and then go to the WinDBG and then go to file and then uh, click on open crash, open crash dump and then open this particular MDMP file that is created. So uh, this is loaded now. So what I'll do first is like I would uh, uh, basically like load the public symbols. Um, uh, symbols is kind of a language that basically um, resolves all your stack and things like that. So what I'll do is like let me execute this command to load the symbols. Again, uh, I'll put in this information like what command I basically have to uh, run for loading the symbol in the description. And uh, uh, what I'm doing is like this command is going to download the public symbols to a folder called C drive. Uh, JVS wiki underscore public underscore symbols. If you have, want a different drive and a different folder name, you guys can definitely change that. So let me run that. It's going to take some time to uh, download. So in my case, um, it is completed now. So what I'll do next is like I would uh, uh, reload uh, the symbols. So the command for that is uh, dot reload slash F. This is going to take good amount of time. Uh, depending upon your uh, um, an internet speed and also like uh, it is um, uh, going to uh, download all the required uh, uh, symbol files at least for this particular dump. So it's going to take time. Okay, I had to uh, pause the video because it uh, took close to uh, 15 minutes for uh, the symbols to load. 
so it's done now so let's look at the location let's go to the c drive and then check the jvs wiki public symbols this is the one that i've utilized so if we can see here all the public symbols required are all downloaded here so there is huge uh, symbols that were uh, downloaded so that's the reason it took good amount of time so let's uh, try if uh, the symbols are loaded properly so let's try a command lmvm sql server and then what i'm able to see is like the product version is like 1504236 which is basically sql server 2019 let's check that once and what I'm able to see is like it's same here, 15042436. So uh, I'm pretty sure like the symbols are uh, loaded fine. So what we'll do is like, let's do some basic checks on uh, this particular um, uh, dumb file. So what I'll do is like, I will use the tilde symbol. Uh, so that basically lists you all the threads that is present on this particular uh, dumb file. To be clear, this is a user initiated dump file and it's not an exception, like it's not a dump file created uh, due to an exception, like maybe an uh, access violation, non-yielding scheduler, deadlock scheduler, etc. It is just an, um, a dump that was taken. Uh, we usually use uh, user initiated dumps. For example, if uh, we feel like there is something wrong uh, happening on the SQL server. So what we basically do is like we uh, uh, take uh, three or four uh, um, user initiated dumps um, uh, with a frequency of like maybe uh, four to five minutes each. And then we will be looking at uh, these dumps to understand what is going on. But for this video, I've just taken one dump and uh, I just want to show like uh, how do we install uh, Windows Debugger and then how do we configure it. So right now we use the tilde symbol and then listed uh, all the threads available on this particular uh, dump file. So next what we'll do is like uh, we will get into one of the threads here. So in this case, I'm going to do a tilde 79s. And then I'll be getting into this particular thread. If you notice here, previously it was 27. And now after I uh, uh, typed tilde 79s, I'm able to see like I am have entered into the thread 79. So if we put in a command called kc, then you will be able to look at the uh, stack for this particular thread. So uh, that's it for this video. We will talk about process threads scheduling quantum quantex switches on our next video thanks for watching have a great day jai hind